A lot of you will be aware of the FedEx shooting, a recent mass shooting in the United States. And what has been sensationalized about it is the guy who did it was a white supremacist and a brony. And it's obviously another awful tragedy. It's where, you know, certain laws in the US have failed the people who died. And it's not something to really make fun of. But as someone who has done numerous videos on weird neo-Nazi subcultures, I thought I would do, a, you know, a take on this particular topic. Now, this isn't going to be speculating so much on why this guy was the way he was. I've made other videos really discussing why certain, you know, sub-communities of subcultures, how they attract people, how they recruit people... This is not really what this video is, so please go check out my um, why so many, I think, bronies and furries are in the alt-right from January. Some of you actually might have seen that before you subscribed to me because it blew up at the start of this year. But I've also made specific videos on a lot of this stuff, so please go check that out if you're interested after this video. But what we're going to do today is talk about the shooting, talk about this guy and his background... Then we're going to go a little bit into the history of Nazi bronies, for those of you who may not have seen my other videos. And then we're also going to get a reaction from the community, because I checked out one bronies blog who was, you know, saying the community needs to do better. And like with all these videos, I have to say, you know, a lot of these Nazi white supremacist elements are the minority. Most people who I've interacted with who are either brony or furries are perfectly fine and nice people. You know, that's probably the majority of them. But of course, sometimes with stuff like this and online fandoms, you do get an, you know, an element that can be very extreme or can be very racist, which we're going to discuss in the video. If you want to support my work continuing for the future, regardless of what YouTube do, please consider becoming a patron. If you want to join our growing community, please check out the Discord and the subreddit in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, check out at the Cavernacle on Instagram and Twitter. And also you slash Tommy Cahill 1995 for my personal Reddit. Also, thank you everyone for getting me to 30,000 subscribers. We have obviously the chocolate orange pyramid for every 5k. I get a new one. We're going to be chugging along to 35k probably for the next month or two. So help me get there and help me build this even larger. Also, a lot of you have asked this, but I archive my live streams on the Cavernacle Extra, which is my second channel. If you're interested and want to catch up on any of that stuff or you can't make the current live streams, go subscribe to that channel. Link in the description. Now, eight people were killed in this FedEx shooting and it seems to be racially motivated because a fair few of the victims are actually Sikh. Now, I've spoke about this before, but Sikhs are often the victims of violent hate crimes that are supposedly trying to target Muslim people because, you know, in their ignorance, right supremacists often think Sikhs are Muslims, but of course you can't rule out that this guy just wanted to kill non-white people. And because of his extremist beliefs, it's probably not a coincidence that is the majority of who he killed. Also, it's worth mentioning that this guy did used to work at this facility, but again, I still don't think it's a coincidence that he attacked people mainly who weren't white. So just to name them, there was 19-year-old Samaria Blackwell, 19-year-old Carly Smith, 50-year-old Jasvinder Kaur, 66-year-old Amarjeet Johal, 68-year-old Jasvinder Singh, 74-year-old John Weissert, 48-year-old Amarjeet Sekhon, and 32-year-old Matthew R. Alexander. Now, before we get into the motives and the brony stuff, it also seems to be like a really, really frustrating lack of gun laws. So listen to the background of this shooter. So in March 2020, police were called to the home of Brandon Hull, and that's the guy who did the shooting, after his mother reported Hull that he wanted to attempt suicide by cop. Police seized a shotgun and placed the teen on temporary hold. Prosecutors then decided not to file a petition with the court to add the suspect to the red flag list because his family agreed to forfeit the firearm. That decision ultimately allowed Hull to legally purchase two assault rifles months later, which he used to attack former co-workers at the FedEx ground facility, killing eight people. Also, it's worth, men also it's worth mentioning that this guy did used to work at this facility, but again, I still don't think it's a coincidence that 
he attacked people mainly who weren't white. So that's a pretty scathing indictment of the really relaxed gun laws in America. No matter where you stand on gun ownership, don't you think someone who both has extreme beliefs and whose mum had called the police to take away his firearms shouldn't be allowed to purchase firearms? Can we not just all agree on that? And if that sort of gun restriction was in place, these people would be alive today. And that is just another really frustrating thing about the American system. And it's a country where stuff like this keeps happening and it keeps happening with legal firearms. And people like to say, well, if you couldn't get them legally, people just buy them illegally. But I'm sure a lot of you would like it to be a lot harder for people like this to buy firearms. If they wanna get them, it should be harder. And if they wanna get them illegally, they're committing a crime by doing so. This guy technically did not break any laws by buying these firearms after he'd handed one in and said he wanted to do suicide by cop. Again, this guy shouldn't have had access to firearms. Now, Rolling Stone did an article sort of regurgitating a lot of the stuff that's been done in the past, but I still feel it's interesting to read. So it's titled, Do Bronies Have a Nazi Problem? FedEx Shooting Shines Light on a Faction of the Subculture. And they said, according to the Wall Street Journal, which cited internal memos circulated by Facebook in the wake of the attack, the gunman primarily used his Facebook accounts to discuss his love for My Little Pony, a children's cartoon series featuring magical ponies. Male fans of the show often referred to as bronies. Though the memo was quick to state that there was no indication that brony culture played a role in the attack, the gunman posted about his love of a tawny pony named Applejack, one of the main characters in the franchise, less than an hour before the rampage. I hope that I can be with Applejack in the afterlife. My life has no meaning without her, he wrote. If, there was, if there's no afterlife and she isn't real, then my life never mattered anyway. The gunman also reportedly had a history of posting far-right content, such as a meme suggesting Jesus had been reincarnated as Hitler. Again, this guy should be nowhere near firearms and also doesn't seem mentally stable, thinking that My Little Pony is real and he'll be reunited with the cartoon in the afterlife. And just a quick side note that the neo-Nazi brony community was born out of 4chan. Surprise, surprise. Basically, during an April Fool's Day event, they blended the brony and the pole communities together, and instead of really annoying each other, a lot of them found some common cause, and then they developed the neo-Nazi brony community. And then Rolling Stone got on to say, what is the relationship between the brony fandom and the far right? Because the community took root on 4chan, which tends to be a bastion of unfettered misogyny and hate speech, there's always been a small sliver of the fandom that has skewed far right. According to Lauren Orsini, who's been covering this stuff, she says, even in the mid 2010s, you were seeing fringe groups come out, people whose involvement in the fandom was designed to shock and disgust. You're also seeing positive fringe elements like brony fan artists and musicians who are creatively building on the fandom in more appealing ways, but the unpleasant stuff has been there alongside it for a decade. In recent years, these extremist elements have been getting more mainstream attention. Last year, in the wake of the George Floyd killing and the rash of BLM protests that swept the country, Atlantic reporter Caitlin Tiffany wrote that an internal battle had erupted on the fan art community, Derpa Buru, with many aggressively downvoting BOM-themed My Little Pony fan art on the grounds that the platform should be used to spread political messages. This was in spite of the fact that it had long been a trend of members of the fandom to submit MAGA or Nazi-inspired imagery, including art depicting an original swastika-emblazoned character named Ariane, and I've included this character on some of my thumbnails in the past. In response to the reports that the FedEx shooter was involved in the fandom, Many within the community are taking steps to actively disavow the far-right extremist contingent of the subculture. Right-wing bronies now have a body count. They have to continue to be pushed out of our community and spaces. None of that wishy-washy both sides shit. But Derpy Buru pulled, these people must be actively rejected. Now, the shooter was a white supremacist, and it's probably not surprising to many of you that, you know, alt-furry, alt-brony communities and, and various others that are very similar are mainly made up of young white men, just like this guy was. And of course, that's why the far right often infiltrate these communities in the first place, because they see it as fertile ground, because you have people who have to be online in the first place, because the brony community spawned on 4chan, and you kind of have to be very, I guess, social media savvy, but you have to go even deeper than that, because a lot of people even who use the internet don't know what bronies and furries really are. And I guess you have to be passionate about something 
that isn't mainstream for people your age, you know, white men in their early 20s and stuff. And then you have to also like something that I guess general society might find a little strange because you're older men who like a children's cartoon which is aimed, I guess, at young girls. Now, Vice did some reporting where they talked to the international anthropomorphic research team which sort of did a study into the demographics of these communities. So the article says that after surveying over 10,000 furries, the study found that the majority of furries are aged below 25, up to 85% identify as male, and up to 90% are white, 54% are atheist or agnostic, and 23% are Christian within the furry fandom. There's a 21% overlap with bronies. So not conclusive, but it's hard to add an academic element to these studies, but let's just say, you know, they're kind of similar. There's a 21% overlap. So let's say it's majority white at that. Maybe not 90%, but let's say majority. So white supremacy and the alt-right have become far more normalized. And like Van Jones said, when Trump was elected, it's like a white lash, like, you know, a white backlash against its more prominence of progressive politics and diversity and stuff like that where there's a perceived image that the white people in places like America or the UK are no longer getting the best opportunities. And some of them even think they're not getting a fair share of the general societal pie. And then also a lot of them are just, you know, lamenting the loss of being the absolute top dogs in, you know, a white supremacist system, although white people still disproportionately make up positions of power. And get access to the best jobs and often live in the best areas. But these guys, because they're not all controlling everything, they are getting frustrated. And when you're young and naive, I guess it's easier to indoctrinate people like that. And that's why, you know, places like the Brony community are often a target for online white supremacists. Now I could go on a rant and say that like, this is proof that, you know, the Brony community has a widespread Nazi problem. You know, I could go on and say that, but I'd like to let someone who's actually involved in this fandom talk about it and give some more nuance to it. Because I think with someone like me, it's easy to take the stance that either, no, it doesn't have a problem. This is a real fringe, you know, part of the community. And although it's bad, it's you know not a widespread problem. Or I could say, you know, completely demonize them and say they need to address this. So let's get a more nuanced take from someone who actually knows this stuff way better than me. And through someone on my Discord, they say, I have permission to read this out. I wouldn't mind speaking to them, but I just didn't have time because I had to get this video out today. So uh, Blitz the Dragon, who writes blog posts about the community and stuff. So um, about a day ago, they wrote something saying, something we need to talk about. And it goes on to say, hey guys, it's been a while, hasn't it? There's something really important we need to talk about readers. Few of you are going to like hearing this. It might make you angry, offended, feel attacked. How you take this is up to you, as is whether you want to listen, but this needs to be said, and I've waited long enough to say it here in the pony space. As most of you likely know, one of the recent slew of mass shooters in the past week was revealed to be a brony, and from his Facebook post, it was, it was apparent he subscribed to some violent extremist beliefs. One post he made asserted that Hitler was a reincarnation of Jesus. It's easy to dismiss him as a lone nut job, a victim of inadequate access to mental health. But in all honesty, the only thing that surprises me is that a brony hasn't committed a mass shooting sooner. Not because of the mental illness, but because of a toxic subset of the purported fans of the show. And he talks about the Rolling Stone article, then says, when Equestria Daily linked this article, general consensus among the comments was to deny that the shooter could be a real brony as it goes against the values of the show that we have cherished all these years. This is not who we are, was, was the common refrain. I have some bad news, folks. It should serve as a reminder that this fandom was born on 4chan, which has been identified as a major hub for neo-Nazi indoctrination and recruitment. From the very beginning, casual bigotry was not only tolerated, but welcomed, all of it was and continues to be excused as edgy jokes, shit posting, and maybe in the early days that's what it was, though I can't be certain. But regardless of intent, when a community allows the positive portrayals of Nazism to continue unchallenged, usually on the grounds of free speech, that community sends a very clear message to everyone watching, neo-Nazis are welcome in our space. Conversely, any women, minorities or queer folk wishing to participate are told, People want to harm you are also welcome in our space. While I trust that most bronies don't subscribe to Nazism, too damn many will tolerate its presence on the ground of acceptable viewpoints or respect freedom of speech. 
But what does it say about us as a community when artwork that contains all kinds of swastikas and other Nazi imagery is consistently upvoted, but a picture of endorsing Black Lives Matter? Bronies claim to be apolitical and yet express a clear ideological preference. It's all happening right under our noses and we're either too scared or too uncaring to confront it. Last year, the largest My Little Pony image uploading site, Derpa Buru, made the decision to remove pro-Nazi artwork from the site, including pictures of Ariane the Nazi Pony. It should be noted that Ariane is the third most popular original character by tag count on this site. The backlash was swift and site-wide. Many popular artists immediately submitted do not post requests. Some even requested takedowns of their galleries, citing the site's censorship. Admins panicked and reversed the decision, spurring even more artists to DNPs and takedown requests. In the end, the admins tried to compromise by having the default filters hide Nazi stuff, but it's still readily accessible, and by hiding it from the casual browser who doesn't think to turn off the filters, they are making two statements, that Nazism will be protected and allowed to spread unmolested and that we will turn a blind eye to its presence. It does not have to be this way. It shouldn't be this way. If we throw the Nazis, incels and other toxic individuals out of our shared space, our community will become stronger and more vibrant for it. It will not be easy and it may take years, but take a look to the SCP Foundation. They made the decision to excise its toxic 4chan roots in a drawn out and highly unpleasant battle. In the end, it was worth it for everyone who wasn't a hate-filled bigot. So to loop back around to the refrain from in the comments of Equestria Daily, this is not who we are. I want you, my readers, to prove it. The time has come to look inward and decide if we truly believe in harmony. We need the courage to clean up our community so that we can genuinely say that sick people like the FedEx shooter are not part of it. I want to see clear, unequivocal denunciations of Nazism, fascism, white supremacy, misogyny, homophobia, and transphobia. I want to see artwork depicting hate and hate symbols in a positive light downvoted into oblivion with the same vigour that bronies download things that get too political. I want to see the admins of our biggest and most influential sites take a principled stand and ban the pro-Nazi content from the servers. On Derpa Buru, it would be as simple as deleting everything tagged with Ariane or Nazis. Equestria Daily made modest progress by banning Ariana submissions, but there is still work to be done. I want to see hate speech treated the same way that we treat yelling fire in a theatre. I want to see racism acknowledged as racism, no matter how ironic or edgy it's supposed to be. And then finally, for those of you who are still with me and haven't jumped to the comment section to boast about which part you stopped reading out, I want to make one final appeal. A better community is possible. A better life is possible. Friendship can be truly magic if we let it. That means that the worst elements of our fandom need to be pushed out. Let them go off the fringe somewhere, but do not let them back into play. So that was by Blitz the Dragon, who has a blog talking about all this stuff. So very nicely put and outlines the problems from someone who has to deal with them. The lack of moderation, the lack of filters. Now, it's obviously a good step. There's some problems I can still see. For example, TikTok has a lot of filters on Nazi stuff but people just spell it differently and it doesn't always catch it. Like, like that video I made about alt-right TikTok where there's people having like, you know, Oswald Mosley or Pinochet and they spell like Wehrmacht differently and they spell other things differently. So you can still find it if you want to. But some more types of moderation is necessary. And it's a shame that we live in this age now. And I think it was shown in the backlash to Wolfenstein 2 coming out where it really played into this, you know, marketing of violence against Nazis is good, basically. And the war was righteous, and this sort of fight is righteous. But then a load of people got offended. Like, get your politics out of my games and stuff like that. And it feels like we're trying to sort of both sides things like, you know, far-right extreme beliefs and treat them the same as progressive beliefs where we fight for racial equality, like they're two sides of the coin like it's the moderate right and moderate left position to take it's pretty ridiculous but that's the point that we're at so you know i totally commend this person for coming out and saying all this stuff it's clear from their point of view steps need to be taken to address these things and like i said although i do not believe that most bronies are neo-nazis or white supremacists but i, I think blitz outlined how this stuff can fester and thrive under the guise of other things like freedom of speech, for example. And although we don't know too much about the FedEx shooter, it's you know perfectly possible they could have expressed these views 
online in brony forums and it could have been tolerated because even from Blitz's own post, it seems that it can be tolerated. And from the work being done on this issue for the last like seven years, it's clear it is a problem and it will be good if you know these communities implement the steps that Blitz says. It won't be perfect, they'll still be around, but like they said, push the fringe even more to the fringe and show them they are not welcome. I think that is the best method to do this stuff. Anyway, it's just a tragic situation all round. And like Blitz said, was I surprised when this white supremacist mass shooter turned out to be a brony? You know, I know about this stuff pretty well, so I wasn't surprised even though it might have been a shock to a lot of people, but you know, just a tragedy could have been avoided in many, many ways. And hopefully the brony community takes steps to make sure people like this aren't welcome. And hopefully the authorities in America look at their laws where this guy who clearly shouldn't have had a weapon was able to buy two more weapons after surrendering his gun only a year ago. But that is it for the video. Check out my other work on loads of alt-right stuff, whether that is the Boo series, whether that is the alt-right community series. Done lots of work on these types of things. If you're interested in that stuff, a lot of you probably subscribed to me after I covered this in the first place. If you want to find me on social media at The Cavernacle, Twitter and Instagram, want to join our communities, Discord and my subreddit in the description. If you want to you know, subscribe to the second channel, that is also in the description. If you want to support my work on Patreon, stuff like this is demonetized. Every you know dollar is appreciated. So that is in the description as well. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.